Hi, I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny, and in this video I'll be sharing with you the recording from the live question and answer session that I did over on the Instagram platform on Monday the 15th of January 2024. So I'm going to be sharing with you the winners of our recent Cashmere book competition, showing you some sneak peeks of the gorgeous fabrics that are going to be available in our sample sale event in a couple of weeks time. I've got sewing society clues, some new, brand new fabrics that have just arrived into the shop th today that will be going online later this week and of course I'll be answering all of your sewing and dressmaking and pattern and fabric recommendations and requests as well. So lots of fun, light-hearted fabric and sewing chat and lots of inspiration to be had as well. But if you are watching here on YouTube and you'd like to ask a question or you've got any comments or anything that you want to share with the, the sewing community as well, then please, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will add it to my list for next week. So I'll switch over to the live recording now. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you very soon. Good evening everyone, how are we all doing this evening? It's Monday, what are we on? It's at the 15th of January and I'm here again for my weekly Instagram live question and answer, just chatting to you about sewing and dressmaking and fabric. So we just want some kind of light-hearted chat for this evening, then welcome, thank you for joining. I am slightly getting blinded by my light tonight. I might just need to turn it down a little bit. My eyes are going to start watering. Hopefully that's okay. <laughs> okay, so one of the first things that I wanted to share with you this evening is a little bit of a sneak, sneak peek of some of the amazing fabrics that are going to be in our sample sale that is um, a week on, uh, not this weekend, but the weekend after. Um, I'm just going to show you a little snippet um, of some of the some of the stuff that we're going to have. The way it works is it's all sort of fixed length um, and we're going to be sending out more information about it just now but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a taste. So we've got, it's all woven fabrics. It's from one of our suppliers that we've used quite a few times for kits and the quality is amazing. So we've got some amazing lovely checks here. These are cotton and they're sort of brushed a little bit as well. Some gorgeous colours there. You're gonna love them. And then we've also got the very like sumptuous rich fabric. So we've got some really nice velvets and I'm gonna be making some things with velvet as well to give you some ideas for what you can do with it. But yes, yeah, some really gorgeous cotton velvets too. And then also some moleskins, which is a fabric that we've not really not had in the shop before. Um, but but they're, some of them are really sturdy. They're, they're very, very soft, got a lovely feel to them. They're going to be great for jackets and trousers and that sort of thing. So there's lots of nice moleskins too. And then the thing that I think you might love the most is some amazing cords. There's loads of beautiful colours of cord. There's These ones are all actually quite chunky, but there are like a, a, a variety of different whales of cord as well and um, so yeah these are all part of the sample sale event which is not this weekend but the weekend after so um, our preview on the Friday evening is now sold out um, but you can come anytime you want during the day we're spe especially going to be open on Sunday as well we're normally totally closed on Sundays but just for the event we're going to be opening from 11 till 3 on the Sunday as well so if you find it hard to visit the shop on a Saturday that weekend is your chance to visit um, on the Sunday so hopefully I'm going to see lots of you there I'm excited um, so, so yeah that's a little sneak peek of the the sample sale coming up. The other thing that I wanted to share with you tonight as well was the winners of the competition that we had running on for winning a copy of the new Cashmere book. So this is Cashmere's second book and um, it's got lots of positive positive praise and feedback and um, I think people who've had the first book really love it and um, so so yeah we've got three copies of that to give away and we have used like a little um what's it called a winner generated app and um, from all of the entries on the post so thank you if you if you shared or if you entered into that competition our three winners are drum roll please and uh, we've got Shan who is at Wellington underscore house. Congratulations, Shan. We've got Sarah C, who is at Sarah C Sewing. Well done, Sarah C, you've won a book. And then we've got Emma Smith, who is at Happy Sew 16. So we're gonna be sending you, a we'll send you a, a direct message on Instagram and we'll get in touch with you and then send your books out to you and I hope you enjoy using them. If you were unlucky and you didn't get your hands on a copy of the book and maybe you wanna 
get it anyway. Uh, we've put a blog post together as well that's got all the different projects in the book and some recommended fabrics for each type of project too. So you can always check that out on the blog. Um, so on the website in the blog section and then you can see what sort of things we recommend for that as well so so yeah thank you everyone who took part and well done to the winners um so i think somebody said did i miss the fabrics I, so i was showing some of the fabrics that are going to be in the sample sale but i always save the recording of the live to my feed so when we get to the end you could just watch back the start a little bit and you'll see what ones i showed um but yes congratulations to everyone indeed. Um, okay, so the other things that I wanted to just mention before we get stuck into your questions is that I mentioned it last week as well, is that the, my new tutorial on YouTube and on the blog as well on check and check matching and plaid matching. Hence, I'm wearing a check shirt tonight in honor of that. It's now up on YouTube and on the blog. So if you did fancy tackling matching checks or plaids, this year, then do check it out. It's got lots of good advice in there for how to do it. Um, my general headline is, is that obviously it's quite involved and it takes quite a long time to cut out and sort of prepare all your pattern pieces. So you definitely need to kind of relish and enjoy that sort of slower process of like thinking ahead and working out how things come together. I actually find it incredibly satisfying. Um, but I know that it does require a lot of extra patience and it's not up everybody's street. Um, but yeah, if you if you ever want if you want to see what's involved, then check it out. There's on the blog there's lots of pictures and like sort of explains it all too. So you can either like look at it in written form or you can hear me chat about it on Instagram. So that is there as well. And then in a couple of weeks' time. So yeah, it's two weeks and Wednesday, finally, the first kit of 2024 will be out. So the new, two new sewing society kits for 2024. I was trying to remember what hints I've already given you. Comfort is definitely featuring in there. Um, and and yeah, I think what one is, one is basically like an outfit. The other one you would wear with something else. It's like a really real classic. I'm sure you'd make lots of them again and again. I know you like patterns where you can get use out of them make lots but um I think you're gonna love them but of course I'm always gonna say that um so so yeah sewing society coming out soon and then I also wanted to show you a little bit of a sneak peek of some new fabrics that are going to be on later this week we were expecting them to arrive last week and they didn't but they've come today so they're not on the website yet but there's a little taster of what's going to be in the just arrive section later in the week um, so it's all all like the new season fabric starting to come in. So we're kind of seeing the end of like the thicker, chunkier stuff now and look ahead to warmer, brighter days. Um, so we've got this one here, which does come in a few different colourways. This is it's a viscose linen base cloth, but it's got these little dots embroidered on it here. And as I said, we do have it in a couple of colourways. This is a really lovely sort of berry colour. Lots of natural vibes in here. Definitely nice for like a little dress or a top. So I'm really liking that one. And then I thought I'd show you a colourful check as well in honour of my check and plaid matching post. This is nice and colourful. Um, and now you know how to match it because I've told you how. So so yeah, I love all the colours in that. It's gorgeous. Um, Somebody asked about PJs as well. This would make nice PJs. Um, and then this one's quite fun. If you fancy a little border print. So that's embroidered on. It's like a really lightweight kind of cotton, cotton voile really. Um, which is, I guess, like an off-white colour. And then it's got this gorgeous embroidery at the bottom. Um, which is really nice. Nice to make a feature of that. Like you can make a little top or a dress and that would be your hem. And then a couple of little um, nice white ones that have got some subtle detail in them. Hopefully you're going to be able to pick this up. So again, it's like a really sort of lightweight cotton voil is like the main base fabric. But then it's got these really pretty embroidered white flowers on it. So that's really nice. Make a very delicate little top or blouse. It's gorgeous. And then another white one, which again would be really nice for a little blouse. Or a little top is this one which has got a check woven into it and um, so it's all white but then the, the check's just textured so these ones are kind of more like sort of solid lines 
and then these ones almost like a little sort of lattice detail it's really nice and um, so yeah very light and fresh and delicate not really for the absolute freezing weather that we've had right now but you know we're, we're on we're on the way to longer warmer days so they will all be on the website later this week because they literally just arrived today so there's there's lots more that's just a little taster but i'll be able to show you more of them next week and um, okay let me just get myself organized here and get rid of some stuff so that i can get to the things i need to show you so if you do have any questions as i'm chatting along then please feel free um to chip in and ask um, and if I know the answer, I will let you know. If I don't know the answer, I might have to add it to my list to next week. Um, but yeah, we've got, I've got some nice fabrics out to show you tonight. So lots of inspiration on the way. Okay, Rachel's asking, will the main shop be open on Friday the 26th in the evening? Yes, it is. Um, it will be open. Yeah. I know in the past you've done coat workshops. I was just wondering if you had any more planned in the near future. Probably not in the near future, but definitely in the future. Definitely. Um, my Darwin's Voyage arrived and it is beyond beautiful. I know it is really nice. That's one of the new Liberty prints. It's beautiful. Um, I've just made an Oslo coat for a friend and it needed lots of pattern matching. My first attempt and I am delighted with the result. Well done. Very generous that it's for a friend. Um, yeah, it's very satisfying when you when you spend time matching. You never get it totally perfect. I actually ended up sewing one of those Kylie and the Machine Imperfect labels in it because I almost drove myself to distraction making this making this shirt. It's a fabric that we had a few, I think it must have been a few years ago now, and it's a twill weave. And basically, it's almost like the twill weave of it, like made it kind of a bit shifty and I really had to like manipulate it to make everything match, but got there in the end. Yeah, it's really satisfying. Um, hello from South Dakota, hello. Have you got any of the buttons left from the Gladys blouse? Yes, I believe we do. Um, they should should be on the website in the button section. If you can't find them, just send me a direct message and I'll find the link for you. Um, the first fabric you showed with the dots, since dotted fabrics usually have the dots in regular rows, just like a stripe, do you need to cut out the pattern pieces so that the lines of dots match up? Um, I suppose it depends what you're making. They're not, but let me show you again. Like there's the, there's the selvage. And then, yeah, you can kind of see the rows of dots. I don't, I don't imagine it would make like a huge amount of difference because they're not, you know, they're not, it's not like then the next one is here, it's sort of over a little bit. Probably wouldn't worry about it too much. It might depend on what you're making though. Um, okay, so I also had just a little bit of comments on the recording that I posted on YouTube as well last week as well that you might find interesting. We were having a discussion about the name Pogo Nip of the new Friday Pattern Company sort of pullover. Um, and it is apparently a park in Santa Cruz, California, where Friday Pattern Company is based. Interesting. Um, so, so yeah, that's where the name comes from. And then we were also talking about long shirt dresses. That was another question last week as well. So Debs said that I've just finished the Stokex, S-T-O-K-X, K-X. Let me start again. S-T-O-K-X, Eve dress, <laughs> which is panelled with really good sleeve drafting recommended. And she's going to put a pattern review up in the next week or so. So yeah, if you're looking to make a long shirt dress, check out the Stokex Eve dress. There we go. And then the other thing that we were talking about last week as well was about when you kind of lose your sojo or you're like not really feeling that motivated to sew. So Helen said, I started sewing a fall collection inspired by Alexandra Morgan's August YouTubes using patterns and fabrics I have as much as possible and it really ramped up my sojo again and it's still in progress. So yeah, that's that sounds like good if you that sounds good if you sort of need something to help you focus and somebody's put together a fall collection. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, a lot of other people in cold places too. Freezing in Renfrew, I can imagine. Hello from Indiana, USA, where it is five degrees below zero. That is 
that is cold that is cold um okay so the first question that i had sent in beforehand was what is the best elastic to use for an elasticated waistband where there is a channel like linen trousers any tips welcome to create a pre professional look as it as it can look quite messy thanks julie so the elastic that we use or that i typically use we've done quite a few sewing society kits that are trousers that have elastic in them sometimes it's like the whole way round, or sometimes it's just um like the the back part of the waistband um and we have this elastic here it comes in black and white um and i guess i don't know it's just kind of like regular elastic to me i'm sorry that i don't have any sort of special term on it i guess what you're looking for is some degree of lateral stiffness which is like this way, you know, you don't want it to crumple too much. Um, and we do sell Prim do what's called a pyjama elastic. And I guess the theory is, is that it's a lot softer because you would want that for pyjamas, but it does kind of just sort of like flop a little bit. It doesn't really like hold its shape a lot, but I was thinking of other reasons maybe why you might be finding it that, that it looks messy. The, the question didn't really describe it in what way it looks messy. I've not seen a picture or anything. So um, I'm just trying to imagine things that might sort of go wrong. It's really either if the channel that you make is either too big or too small in, the, in relation to the elastic that you've got, then that can kind of make it look a bit messy. Because obviously if the channel's not big enough, it's going to squish the elastic and it's not really going to sit flat. Um, or if the channel's too big, then the elastic's kind of going to move around a little bit. What what does look quite nice if the channel is too big um, for the for the elastic that you've got is that say this was like the top edge of the waistband is that if you so just effectively make the channel narrower to to meet the width of the elastic and then you end up with almost like a little sort of frill at the top which looks quite nice. And then the other thing that you can do as well, you've, you've taken the words out of my mouth, Megan, is top stitching over the elastic channel too. So you have to make sure that the, obviously when you put elastic in, it's gonna gather the fabric up and like kind of, you know, like rush it up a bit. And um, so you wanna make sure that, that you're then like sort of pushing the fabric around to make sure that it's gathered up evenly when the elastic is relaxed and then put pins in it, like in this direction. And then you want to, to to top stitch over it, ideally with a stretch stitch, just so it's not you're not going to risk sort of losing any of the the stretchability of it. And you do have to then stretch the elastic as you're sewing it as well, so that the fabric goes flat. And um, and then you can, depending on the width of the elastic, it might be that you do two lines or three lines, and that can just that can just help it to sort of stay in place a little bit more you definitely want to check that the elastic was at the right tension before you did that. <laughs> so you'd want to be like trying your trousers on and making sure the elastic was tight enough or it was not too tight before you do all that top stitching. But yeah, it can definitely make it look neater as well. So a few a few ideas there. Hopefully that helps on getting your elastic um, linen trousers looking a bit neater at the waistband. Okay, the next question was when pressing the arm sinks, should you press them towards the bodice or the sleeve so this is when you you know you put a sleeve in you've got a seam allowance there are you pressing that seam allowance towards the bodice or are you pressing it towards the sleeve typically i would say towards the sleeve um but usually your sewing pattern instructions should tell you what way to do it but typically it's going to be going to the sleeve um okay the next one was do does pressing seams make a big difference and are some irons better for dressmaking than others? I would say pressing seams does make a huge difference. Um, it can make construction much more accurate. It can make the finish look a lot crisper. It can make top stitching look neater. And if you think about it, as you're constructing something and say you have to sew a seam and you're joining two bits of fabric together, and then if you then need to join those two bits of fabric to another bit of fabric, you want to make sure that the seam that's joining the first two bits of fabric is pressed really neatly and that the seam is fully opened up. Otherwise, there's a risk then that when you attach it into the next thing, that it's not going to fit or it's going to, that seam is just going to be sort of folded in on itself a little bit. So definitely pressing your seams, I would say, does make 
a huge, huge difference. And in terms of irons, I would say you just want to make sure that you've got one that's got a really good steam function on it and always keep your iron topped up with water as well so that it's always generating steam. This is obviously more important if using natural fibres, if using things with synthetic fibres, then do be careful with steam and very hot irons because synthetic fibres will singe and melt. Um, but if you're using natural fibres, then you should be fine. Um, but I have used, I, I used to use Phillips irons quite a lot. And we had them in the, we've got them in the studio as well where we do the sewing workshops here. And I would say they are pretty good. Um, I've, I've had some that I've actually, I've, I've still got one that I've had since I opened the shop. So that's like almost 11 years ago. So that one's, that one's done pretty well. Um, but then more recently, I tried a T-Fowl iron, which was recommended by somebody who came in a workshop and they really liked T-Fowl irons. And um, I made sure I got one that had, seemed like it had good steam function. Um, and I tried to go sort of mid price range. Obviously there's lots of variations in iron that you can buy. Um, you know, like quite cheap ones or more expensive ones, but I would say that the key feature really is, is, is it having a, a, a good steam function. Um, sorry, I can't really give you a specific model. Um, if there's any ironing companies out there watching who want to help me out and I can test lots of irons and their steam function for dressmaking, let me know. Um, but that's just my experience of like just sort of buying and using irons myself. If any of you have got any recommendations, do let me know. If you've got like a favourite iron that you like or a brand maybe, um, or if you've like had a bad experience with an iron, also useful. I can I can share <laughs> what not to get in terms of an iron. Um, but yeah, definitely the headline there is pressing your seams as you sew does make a big difference. Okay, the next question was, can you use bias binding to replace a facing on a garment or would it not work? It just depends really. So I have done this on the Tilling the Buttons Indigo dress, which has a facing. And I decided that I didn't want to do that because I made a version in quite a lightweight viscose and I thought, I just don't really want a facing. I want the finish to be a little bit more subtle. And in my haste, what I didn't think through was that it would that when you sew on bias binding, you typically sew on with a smaller seam allowance than what you would sew a facing on with. Therefore, it makes the neckline smaller. So, and because the indigo is a, the indigo dress is just a top that you pull on and off over your head, it doesn't have any fastenings, obviously the, the opening of the neckline generally needs to be big enough to get on and off over your head. And if you use bias binding on that particular pattern, then it does make the, it quite tight getting on and off over your head. So you can do it, but just consider then how it's affecting other parts of construction. Um, and that it, it might be that you have to maybe trim back, like you need to, you would maybe need to trim back the, the, the opening of the neckline so that it's wider before you start. So that when you sew it on with the bias binding with the smaller seam allowance, you still end up with the same size of opening as you would if you put a facing on. So, so yeah, from experience, voice of experience here, that's what I would bear in mind. But, but, but yeah, it, it would work pretty much. Yeah. Um, okay. So what have we got here? I love Rowetta, R Rowanetta irons. Not heard of them interesting i hate ironing i only get my iron out when i sew yeah i i, I also generally don't really like ironing but i i actually use my iron ironing board as a bit like a work surface really so as i'm sewing i'll sort of stand at it to like pin th pin stuff and do things and um, so i kind of have it out all the time anyway i treated myself to an all the slow smart iron a smart iron oh that sounds cool Quite pricey, but it's recommended for sores. Nice pointy tip. So far, so good. Interesting. I'm going to have a look into that. Um, okay, the next question was, which part of the Gutterman thread is supposed to sit on top for a machine with a thread standing up? I've got a Gutterman thread here. I guess it's be the same for any thread, really. Um, but I'm not sure what kind of weird mirror thing that the, the, the camera might do as I show you it. So I'm gonna suggest that generally 
what you would want to do is make sure that the the bit that says Gutterman is at the top. Um, on my machine, I put my thread on horizontally like that. So it's like a horizontal uh, sort of uh, stick thing. I don't know. Oh, I can't think of the right word. But you put your thread onto. And on my machine, the thread is supposed to come off the back. So as I thread it, the, the, the thread has to be coming off the back of the spool of thread. Um, and I would say that that's, that's generally the case if you've put your thread up that way as well. So yeah, I think as long as you have the Gutterman bit at the top, you should be fine. Spool holder, thank you. Um, I have got an all the slow too, and I really love it. Interesting. Um, I have a Juki Socora iron, and I love it. I have a Phillips iron mid-price range, and I'm pleased with it. I always burn my fingers creating bias binding as my iron shoots steam out the front. What you could try, I wonder if we've got them in stock. We do have them in the studio. I need to check to see if we've got any in stock though. We've got these prim silicon finger guards and they're they're just like kind of flexible little things that go over your fingers basically. They cut, it comes in a pack with three and there's three different sizes. So you're meant to put it on your thumb and then your index and middle finger. They're actually quite good for gripping fabric as well, but they are quite good if you're pressing something fiddly like bias binding and like the, the iron is quite close to your fingers because it just helps that your fingertips withstand the heat a little bit more. So yeah, check out, check out the prim finger guards for that. Somebody's saying, yeah, finger guards are brilliant. Um, I don't know whether it's just because I've like done a lot of sewing over the years. I also, random fact, worked as a barista when I was 18. Um, and when as I was steaming the milk <laughs> all summer, I basically like burnt all my fingertips on the thing that steams the milk. And I can just withstand quite a lot of heat in my fingertips. Um, it was quite painful at the time, but it does have its benefits. Um, so yeah, I guess maybe like your fingers might get used to it over time, but the finger guards are good. Um, I bought a prim mini steam iron, thinking it would be useful for ironing seams, facings, etc. but I find it's totally hopeless. My norm normal Phillips steam iron is so much better. Good to know, good to know. Um, okay, so the next question was, I have some pre-quilted fabric for a toddler coat. That sounds really cute. I think I think it's cotton with a polyester wadding. Would you pre-wash it? I would say probably, yeah. I think it's like nicer just to freshen something like that up before you sew with it. So I'm going to say yes. I think you could just wash it. Like so It sounds like you could just wash it regularly in your machine. 30 degrees and um, I probably wouldn't put it in the tumble dryer but, but I'm going to say yes in the, in the answer to that and um, okay the next question was I've brought I've bought some of your variated fur back corduroy to make an alpha jacket that sounds really nice what would be the best way to finish the seams please and should I size up so if you've got an overlocker you could just overlock them it, it might be that you want to trim some of the fur back a little bit this is it here so we've got we've still got some of this left it's in the sale as well um so it might be that yeah you want to maybe like trim some of the fur back on the seam allowances a little bit and then you could overlock them or you could use an overcast foot on your sewing machine as well um but it's not you know although it's like it is quite a thick fabric it does actually squish down quite a bit so i think you know it's sh it sh it'll be fine with either of those things um and then the same with the, the, this one. We've got some of this one left as well. Um, this one's also in the sale. And it's a fur-backed one too. It's a little bit thicker. Um, but but I think the same. I think you'd still be able to overlock that um, or do like an overcast stitch on the sewing machine just to minimise any fraying there. Um, okay, I think there's been more iron in chat. Let me check out what's been happening there. I have the Ollie Slow the fancy yellow one that moves the plate up and down when you touch it. Oh, fancy. Um, I love my prim mini iron, so quick and easy to do interfacing and seems better than having to get the main iron out. Interesting. I have a T-Fal mid-price range iron and I'm pleased with it. Kind of sounds like mine. Um, yes, that's the one. I bought mine in Danelm's Black Friday sale. Good. Yeah, I really love my mini iron too. I have bought the Ollie Sew so too, and I like the fact you can put flat whilst resting between pressing. It is heavier than a normal iron, I think. Yeah. 
This is all very interesting. Is there a padded or cord with shell Sherpa lining rather than fur backed or did I imagine it? Mm, the vol kind of had a fur as opposed to like a sherling lining. Yeah. Um, it sounds like I've just not sussed out my mini iron as other people like them. I guess it just sort of depends on your preference, but yeah, maybe give it another crack. See if you can get on with it, because they are quite expensive, aren't they? Um, okay, so the next question was, fabric suggestions for the Tilling the Button Sunny jacket. So what I think would be really nice for this, actually a lot of the fabrics that are in the sample sale would be really good for that jacket. Um, we've got some chunky cords, some of which are in the sale as well. Um, this one is the Hunter Green Chunky Cotton Corduroy Fabric. It's really nice. Um, so that one would be an option. And we do have it in various different colours. There's another colourway of it there. That's a nice, a nice sort of, what have we called that one? Hazelnut that one but yeah it does it does come in other colors ways as well there's like a sort of teal color and a berry color so if you if you search chunky cotton corduroy fabric online you'll see all the different color ways of that one and um, the other one that would be good as well is the cotton 12 we've got lo lots of colors of that so if you wanted to do a color blocking version there's lots of different um colors for that one too so this is the um the the cotton twill fabric is 100 cotton it's we've used it for the we've used it in an elford kit before we've used it for a kelly anorak um kit too so it's just a really nice versatile one and as i said it comes in lots of colors this is classic navy and um, there's also a really nice sort of like blushy kind of pink one looks like have i lost the no rose um but yeah all different colors in that one too so that's another good option um, another one that I think could work as well is the sanded twill. Um, we've got that in a black, a navy and a stone. Um, and it's really nice too. It feels very soft on the outside, nice and crisp. It'd probably be like a bit lighter weight than the cord and that other twill. And then we do also have the Bedford corduroy too. Um, this is the tan colour weight. Again, it's 100% cotton as well. I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up, but basically it has lines in it that's like corduroy fabric, but it doesn't have a nap like cord. And um, we actually use this in the making backpack kit, but it is it would it would make a nice jacket as well. So that's another another option there for the telling of the buttons uh, sunny. I've just made a jacket in the fur back check. I'd recommend trimming back the fur. Total nightmare with the fluff though. Yeah, hoover at the ready. Um, then overlocker, okay, but was near its limit. Slow sewing, essential. The overlocker coped okay, okay, but it was near its limit. Good to know, thank you. Thank you, Lauren, and everyone for the ironing advice, no probs. Um, okay, the next question was, I love my g, &G Sewing Society Danny Trousers. That was the True by Danny Trousers. We did that back in last summer. Do you have any same or similar fabric in stock? We do. Um, we have got this beautiful lilac-y linen colour. Um, it's such a versatile fabric, actually. It's really good for loads of things. So trousers, skirts, dresses. It makes nice shirts and blouses as well. Tops. Basically, you can do anything with it. And it just... It just, it just like drapes really nicely. I think it's like quite easy to sew with as well. So yeah, we've got a really nice bright lilac. We've got the accru, which is what one of the kit colors were. I'm not sure what color you got. And um, we do have a little bit of this one, which is the rust left. And we've also got this one here, which is the pear green, which is very nice. And then, Nice and bright, yellow, and um, sunshine, sunshine yellow. And then we've also got this one here, which is just like a classic navy, basically. Um, I've also got a pair of Friday Passion Company Saguaro trousers in this too, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, it is a very versatile fabric. Um, I can see why you liked it. Um, okay. The next question was, could you, sh could you please show the apple green double gauze fabric? 
and any other suggestions for PJs. So this is the apple green gauze here. I think it would be nice for PJs, yes. Um, nice bright colour. So that's the apple green double gauze. And um, then we've also got this nice check, which we used for the Agnes pajama kit. That was last, not last year, last year. And um, we've got a tiny little bit of that left as well. Um, and it's got a check, but now with my check matching post, you can look and see how to check match anytime you like. Um, and then the other one that would be really good for PJs, somebody actually shared a picture of some Tilling the Buttons Jamie pyjamas that they made out of this fabric on Instagram and it looked amazing. This is the Robert Kaufman cotton flannel and as you can see it's really nice and colourful. It's just a really good weight, it feels really soft because it's brushed. It just almost like feels a little bit fluffy, it's super cosy um, and this would definitely make lovely pyjama bombs. It's really, really nice. It comes in various different colourways. I thought I'd bring three over to show you the variety of colours, but it is really lovely as well. Um, what was the name of that fabric that was in the lilac? It's the viscose linen. Um, I'll read out the tag because the name and the tag will be the name, the exact name that it is on the website. It's the Lilac Viscose Linen Fabric, 14.50 a metre. That is it there. Um, I've used the red check. Thanks, wanted to see the apple colour. It's fab. I'm about to order it. Lovely. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, I've got the Accru Danny kit. Looks like I now have to buy another six colours. <laughs> um, I know, it's really nice. I really uh, Anything I've ever made in that fabric, I've, I've, I've like loved it. It seems to like wash and wear really nicely as well. Um, yes, thank you for posting the video for matching plaids and checks. Now I feel better prepared to try sewing some check fabric. Oh, that's good. It's, it's good to know what you're getting into, I think, when you, when you're, want, when you want to check match something. Um, okay, let's see. The next question was, I would like to make a white shirt with a frilly collar, but I'm unsure of the fabric weight. So I would say if you're making something that's got a frilly collar, then you i say generally you want something that's that's kind of lighter weight otherwise the frill is going to be quite sort of dense or like firm or kind of maybe like stick out too much and um, also depends on how dense the frill is as well and um, because if it's really you know if it's a very like dense frill where it's like the fabric's really pulled close together and then you you know you're definitely going to want something that's pretty lightweight for that Otherwise, it's just not going to bunch together as much. Whereas if it's more of like a sort of subtle kind of ripple in the frill, you could probably get some away with something that's like a little bit, um, a little bit heavier. Uh, th the ones that I showed at the beginning, I think would be nice. They're they're like a nice sort of weight because they're nice and nice and fine. The, this is one of the new fabrics only arrived in the shop today, so it'll be online on online later in the week. Um, but you know, something that sort of weight, a cotton lawn, um, cotton voil, a little bit trickier to work with, but you could definitely use like a viscose or viscose twill as well. Um, so so yeah, ge the general headline there is something that is lightweight. Um, would the Robert Kaufman work for the Ilford or similar shacket? Yeah, it would. It would be, it would be like, quite, it would probably be quite floppy as a shacket. Um, but you could you could look to line it um, if you wanted it to be like a little bit more bulky. Um, but yeah, you def you definitely could um, use use the Robert that Robert Kaufman it would look nice. Um, okay, the next question was: I am going on a five day sewing retreat in February, exciting, and had decided to make the Azaline wrap dress by Forget Me Not Patterns, which has got the wrap dress as the name describes, it's got quite a high neckline and almost like a sort of fold over collar, sort of lapel on it. The pattern has mixed reviews and I want to get the fabric right to make it look good with pleats. It suggests viscose or linen, etc. But one review says it can look a bit like a dressing gown, which obviously I would like to avoid. Any suggestions on fabric choice, please? I would say, first of all, I would work out in your own head what does something looking like a dressing gown mean to you? 
Whereas in like, what does a dressing gown mean to you? Because for me, I would say anything that's like a sort of thicker, kind of bulkier or more structured fabric would probably feel more dressing gown like than something that was lighter weight. Obviously dressing gowns can come in all shapes and sizes and forms. Um, so it depends in your mind's eye what is a dressing gown and what does one typically look like. Um, so I would also say my my personal interpretation as well of a dressing gown and wanting it to not look like that would I would probably feel like I would want to avoid any plain fabrics because I think that that to me that might make it feel a bit more like a dressing gown and um, so I think so it's definitely something that's got a print on it and um, and vi I think viscose is a good suggestion because it's going to drape really nicely viscose linen could work as well but I would watch out for the percentage mix because if it's got a lot more linen than it does viscose then it's going to have more structure to it um, so that that one that I showed you before, for example, I know this is a plain, but this is just more to illustrate the mix of a viscose and linen. And um, this one, I think it's thirty linen. And um, let me just check. No, it's twenty five linen, seventy point five percent viscose. So it's got way, obviously, got way more viscose than it does linen, which means that it is really like floppy and it's quite drapey. You can see that it's moving around a lot. So so that that type of mix would be good if you're looking at a viscose linen because it's got more viscose in it, it's going to drape more and I think that would be less dressing gown like. Um, but I did pick out one nice viscose print that I did think would look really nice in that dress. Is this one here, it's the Cheetah Blur viscose fabric um, and it's just a nice lightweight plain weave um, viscose fabric and I think it would look really nice in that dress. Um, but we do have lots of other really nice viscose prints too that I think would be nice as well. Um, okay, the next one was, do you recommend using a walking foot when sewing with viscose? Does it slip a lot? I personally don't use a walking foot when I sew with viscose. I mean, it does slip a lot, but I think you just need to sort of, I think you kind of get used to, to handling it. It might be that maybe you need to put in more pins than you would if you were using a more stable fabric, like a, like a cotton or something or a denim or whatever. Um, and then I think it can also help to, if on this, where your sewing machine is on the table, if you like push it back a little bit so that you've got a bit of space on the table between your machine and the edge of the table, um, then it means that the fabric can sort of rest on there as well, rather than resting on your lap. And then that can mean there's just generally less tension in the fabric as it's getting sewn and that can then be like a little bit easier to control as well. Um, what is a good tip in sewing with jersey using an overlocker and how can I sew a one inch seam allowance on an overlocker? A one inch seam allowance is quite big. Um, it's probably about that big. I would probably suggest if you need to do that and you want to do it on an overlocker to trim it down first and then sew it. Um, and then you need to check out your differential feed on your overlocker when you're sewing with jersey um because depending on the setting that you're at can sometimes sort of make the edges wavy i've got a reel on that as well if you look at the archives of reels you'll see that i never used a walking foot with viscose i've never had any problems secret is plenty of pins yet yeah, i would agree and um, apologies if you've already said i was late no probs what is the pattern of the blouse you're wearing please it is the green line archer my favorite shirt pattern of all time um, okay, the next question was, I have a classic black and white herringbone wool and I'm planning on making the Avid Seamstress coat. Have you got any lining recommendations? So I've got a few options or suggestions. Um, I mean, typically I would say for like a wool coat, you want to be getting something that's slippery, like a slippery kind of lining. So I've got two options that I think could probably work with black and white herringbone. One is not particularly exciting, I'm afraid. It's just a plain black lining. Um, it's like a viscose acetate lining, um, but it is nice and slippery. The, the benefit of the slipperiness is that it's really easy to get the coat on and off because um, you're probably going to be wearing it with like a jumper or something underneath. Um, and then the other one, which has got a little bit more of an interesting texture. Can you see how it's reflecting off the light a little bit? This is the Ivory Spot Jacquard lining fabric. So it is a viscose acetate mix as well. 
Um, so either of these would work. If you wanted to make, make it a little bit more exciting, the other thing that you could do is use one of these in the sleeve. So line the sleeve with a slippery lining so that you can get your arm easily in and out your coat. And then you can use something a little bit more exciting for the bodice. Um, it depends how fancy you want to go. I've made coats before where I've used Liberty Tan Alon as the front and back bodice lining. And then, you know, it looks really nice and it looks fancy on the inside um, and just a little bit more exciting. Um, but then you've still got the practicality of being able to get the garment on and off easily because you use slippery um, lining in the sleeves. So yeah, one to think about there. Um, and then last one, what, last question. So if anybody does have any other questions, let me know them now. I just caught this one sort of at the end as I was adding to my list. It was fabrics for the Atelier Jupe Danny jacket, which is made in quite a sort of thick, kind of fleecy, uh, like a fleecy, sherlingy kind of fabric. Um, I don't, we, we did have some teddy fabric in it winter, but I think it's all gone now because I don't see it around the shop anywhere. But one that I was thinking could work, maybe work quite nicely is boiled wool. It would be very warm. Um, but I think that I think that could look quite nice if you're looking for something that's maybe a bit more sort of it's not like as fluffy, um, but it's still going to be really warm because it's 100% wool. So yeah, we've got quite a lot of different colours of boiled wool, and so that's maybe one to have a little think about as well. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, if you do have any other questions, let me know now. Um, thank you for tuning in everyone so if you did miss the beginning i did show some little sneak peeks of the types of fabrics that are going to be in the sample sale event that we're having not this weekend but the weekend after so if you missed the start once i share this live um afterwards which i'll do like right after i finish it and um, then you can go back it's right at the very very beginning so you can watch it again just to see what they what they are and um, but yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing you all very soon in that and then then yeah we do have all those new fabrics going online on the website this week as well so they as i said they just got in today so over the next couple of days they will start to go up in the just arrive section too so definitely going to be like more spring and summer vibes looking towards different types of projects so if you're looking for that type of inspiration it will all be in the just arrive section later in the week um okay jill is asking i'm thinking of the gladys dress that's a fiber mood pattern for a spring wedding what kind of fabric would be nice so i made that for a wedding actually um not last year but the year before and I used the viscose twill, it was like a viscose sateen twill and it worked really nicely. Um, so so I would say definitely something, you know, that does have drape like viscose or, or um, rayon is going to be really nice. Um, and it did, it did, I think you could use a plain weave viscose, which tends to be a bit lighter in weight. But as I said, the one I made was more like a sort of twill weave. So it was a little bit heavier. It was a viscose, but it was a little bit heavier because it was the twill weave in it. In it. I, get, I guess it just feels a bit more substantial as a dress when you use that type of base cloth. And it, yeah, it looks really nice. Um, thanks for another informative and interesting Monday. No prods. Um, I love the idea of a slippery lining on the sleeves and a tanalon in the bodice for the coat. Many thanks for the great advice. No props. Um, I think it can be quite hard to find like a like a really nice slippery lining. So it is quite a good option if you if you want to have something exciting going on in your lining. Um, the other option which which can like make a lining look, you know, like a little bit more special or kind of add a difference to it, it's a bit more subtle, is that you can just use like plain visco slippery lining everywhere, uh, but you can add in some flat piping or like flat binding in between the facing and the lining so we did that on i'm pretty sure we did it on the clear coat when we did that as a kit a few years ago um so so you could if you look in the sewing society section of the website the clear coat you'll see the pictures of the inside and see what it looks like it's, it's pretty easy to do i explain how to do it in the top tips video for that kit which you can still get access to but basically you're just um cutting by strips pressing them in half and then effectively it's like it gets sandwiched in the seam when you sew your lining and facing together and it can just add like a little flash of color on the inside it looks really nice um 
there are some lovely patterned lining fabrics on the website too yeah thanks for your helpful tips i wish i could make your upcoming event maybe a future event yeah fingers crossed um so in terms of like the online aspect of the event we will have some fabrics that that will be going online that are part of the sample sale but it's not going to be that weekend that weekend is just an in-person event and then it'll probably be like a kind of the kind of week week after or like next again week that we've then got fabrics to release online that are part of the sample sale and um, so yeah i know that i know that a lot of you that watch do shop online and maybe coming to the shop in person is just a little bit too far and um, so there will be something online for you too but if you have ever been like looking for an excuse to make a special trip to the shop it'll be a really fun weekend to do that and as I said because we're open on the Sunday as well we're not usually open on the Sunday and um, then it just gives you a little bit of extra chance at the weekend to come and visit the shop and shop and have some nice lunch and dancing or something Um, yeah Um, Jessica's asking are you still doing the sew society kits the sewing society kits yep so the first one for 2024 will be out on the first Wednesday of February. So that is two weeks on Wednesday. So we'll have two brand new kits to share with you then. So make sure you keep an eye out on your inboxes that you signed up to our newsletter. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching everyone. I'll see you again next week. Um, and I hope you have a really good week. You get plenty of time for sewing on these cold evenings if you're somewhere that's cold <laughs> and i'll see you soon <laughs> bye